Knowledge of test containers. Who who knows about test containers? Okay. Uh, who uses every day? Okay, we have few people. All right. Then we will start from the beginning. Um, there are uh, quite a good article. I post the link here. So uh, after uh, when I share the slides, you can take a look. So uh, article covers developer productivity and what impact developer productivity. So you all may see this inner loop where you think how to build a feature, how to write something new that you need to do. Uh, then you write it, then you build it, you test it, and you commit if everything is good. And this inner loop is very important because you need to do it very fast and like you are interested to be in this inner loop as long as, as you can. Uh, and there are some aspects that drive your productivity. Uh, maybe somebody can share what do you think drives your productivity? Good local environment where I can run every single thing. Well, environment, okay. Fast local computer. Yes. Fast feedback on my changes. Yes, fast feedback. Right. Uh, Slack deleted from my hard drive. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's also very important. Because there is, uh, first of all, cognitive load. Uh, this is how you implement things, how you think about it. You probably see that when you pull changes from the branch and see how other people think of building things, you think that, OK, I would probably do it in another way. But this is still, this is cognitive load. You're happy when you have it, when you have something to think about. Next thing is feedback loop that you mentioned, yes, like feedback loop from the testing, feedback loop uh, from your changes, stable environment to have this feedback faster. So the faster you get feedback, that uh, gives you ability to continue working on the feature. And the third thing, it's related to the Slack uh <laughs> on the local uh, machine, it's flow state. Um, when you are in the flow, you can focus on sync and you can make things done. Uh, you can make these things done faster. And if you have Slack messages that distract you from this, uh, it's harder to go into the flow. And also from this article, uh, they provided a diagram of time and how uh, distractions uh, impact your flow state. So if you start to ri writing code and then you see Slack message and then you switch back to code and then you run tests and then you wait for feedback and then something is going on and uh, you end up a day, like I know it by myself, you end up a day, you did a lot of different things but you don't understand whether you were productive or not because you started a lot but you don't understand if you finish like what's, what tasks I can mark as done for myself. So this is very important to be in the flow. And if you are in the flow and nothing distracts you, uh, at some point of time uh, you become productive and you can accomplish things. Uh, so at this point testing becomes also very important because when you have the fast feedback loop from the tests, uh, you can still focus on the task. Uh, you work on the task, you test it, you have fast feedback, you don't need to wait for another team to provide results to you. You can just run tests, few of them, and understand whether it's working, not working, what you should update. Uh, this is where test containers come in place. Uh, so test containers open source is just a set of libraries for different languages that helps you to set up your local environment with real dependencies and have these dependencies in the programmatic way. So this is just one line of code uh, when you say like, I want Redis. And in this line of code, you have Redis on your local machine. If your application depends on Redis, you can connect this Redis to your application, say, say to use 
this particular radius and you can test whatever you want to uh, with your application. You can also say that uh, setting up local environments can be done in different ways uh, by test containers. We can use mocks. This is uh, like uh, one of solutions. It's fast. Uh, it provides fast responses. But you need to maintain it. And if you mock one of your services, when you change the endpoints, you need to change your mock. And this is like constant process. Also something uh, you may forget to update your mock code. Uh, and you will have flaky tests. And you need to work on the mocks rather than work on the feature. Uh, other alternative is having staging or QA environments where you have realistic dependencies. You can have like real Postgre uh, there with tables, with test data. Uh, but it's also fragile. So if somebody run tests against this database and break something, then other person will be not able to run the tests. Or you may have data conflicts when something is overwrite another set of tests. And also, it leads to flakiness. And it's also slow if you need to maintain it. Usually, it's separate team that supports this environment. And if you need to update version of Postgres, you need to go to this team and say, hey, I want new version of Postgres. Uh, other option is testing in production, but like that's risky. Uh, you can do it, that's real, but cost of the failure is very high. Uh, there are some canary releases that some people practice, but it's still very risky. Uh, test containers. Uh, from other hand, uh, they provide self-contained tests. Uh, so you have your real dependency in the programmatic way, and you don't need to worry about the life cycle of uh, this container. Uh, by default, test containers start the containers on setup, so you can start it manually, you can uh, attach it to the life cycle of your test suite and it will start when your test suite runs then uh, you run your tests with real services and after your whole test suite is done containers will be automatically destroyed so it will be a cleanup and you don't need to think about it this is also can be something done with docker compose file and we have a module for Docker Compose, uh, but still with Docker Compose, you need to think about where to start container and don't forget to clean everything after the test suite. Um, I put some numbers about the test container. So there are a lot of companies who are using it. This is about open source libraries only. Uh, we have more than 10 million pools per month of Ryuk image, which is a base image uh, that controls the life cycle of containers. Uh, a lot of organizations, 10 plus languages, so it's Java, .NET, Python, uh, Ruby, uh, even Rust. And uh, we recently did a survey uh, across our community. And people also say that this is something universal for them and that they run uh, more than one service, usually more than three services. So uh, there is a tension in the community uh, with uh, set up uh, local environment with test containers. So particularly any service that you want to have for your application, like third party, uh, database, message broker, cloud. Uh, you can set up it in container with test containers programmatic approach. And we provide modules. Uh, also, uh, I can show on the website or you can take a look after. So this is predefined modules uh, that you can use uh, out of the box. You don't need to configure anything, like if you need Kafka, you just say Kafka container and you have Kafka pre-configured. You don't need to configure Zookeeper. Uh, remember some URLs that you need to connect to. Mm, just set up it in one line of code and that's it. Um, 
At this part, I want to switch to the demo. I hope we can uh, have it running. Okay, not this tab. This tab. Okay. And it's loading. Alrighty. Okay, let's try it like this. Usually test fails while I run them, but this time I was not even able <laughs> to run. <laughs> this is magic of demo. It helps you run test fails to run. Yeah. Okay. Um, Let's start with something simple. Uh, for example, the Redis container that I showed. Uh, how you can set it up? You say generic container, Redis, it's new, generic container, and you provide image here. Redis, six alpine. with exposed ports. And you see radius start. You can also say radius stop. This is manual configuration and you uh, manage uh, your container manually. Um, so we can run it. So I have here, you can see it. Uh, it's a bit small. Test containers, uh, desktop application, where we can also see containers. So it was one container, it spin up, and it's gone. We can say also freeze container shutdown. So by default, uh, test containers uh, start container on the random port. Uh, so we can also say something. Oop. No. Radius get uh, first mapped port. It will be port of our radius. Okay. Let's do like this. And we can run it again. Uh, so this freeze container shutdown feature will not destroy container right now. And we can see that it is running, we can go to terminal, open it, and we are in the Redis container. What else we can do? Uh, containers, Redis, tail logs, and this is logs of the Redis container. So I did not install Redis locally, I just set it up in one container. That's that's how easy you can include radius into your de de dependencies. If we, if we would not stop, uh, like we do now, if we would not stop radius, would it die together with the application? Um, it will leave for some time and then die. Yeah, and for the port, this is radius port uh, of this particular container. If I run it again, uh, it will be another port. And this is very good for testing because you mitigate the probability of port conflicts. Uh, but if you want to debug something, uh, it would be nicer to have 
static port that you can also always connect to. So let's try it with Postgre example. I will stop my Redis. I can terminate it. <laughs> okay. For Postgre, uh, we have module named Postgre container. So with Redis, I use generic container, and in this generic container, you put, you can put any image you want. It should be Docker built image, and also test containers require Docker supportive environment in order to run this container. But still, you can put your service, like your microservice, your uh, third-party application, uh, like anything that can be run in containers. So with Postgre, we can do Postgre. Let's find the latest version. I don't remember. Okay. Can we just can we just say latest and it would pick up latest? Right? Um it can, but I would suggest specifying uh like specific versions uh, because you want to know what version of database you run with your application. If you use latest, maybe there is some critical bug in the latest that they need to fix ASAP and you will be debugging why something is not working. Like it's, it's better to be confident. Okay, this one. Parse, we say Postgre. Oops. Why it's not working? Okay. Uh, oh, I forgot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And we can say Postgres start. And we can print here Postgres. JDBC uh, URL. So you have it out of the box. You don't need to remember it. You have also a lot of methods that you can call here. So Postgre, get password, get database names, so get user. So you can set these values as well uh, for your like some specific configurations. This all goes uh, out of the box because we are using module. So this is something pre-configured. You don't need to remember the things. And freeze containers, okay. It will take probably some time to pull the image first. Yes. But this is container that is starting. Okay, this is done. This is JDBC URL that can be used for connection. And uh, Test Containers Desktop provides right now thing that named services uh, where you can configure some static ports. So for example, I have here it configured for Postgre. Uh, you just go to config location and this is my Postgre. You say what port you want to expose and you say what is the image name uh, that you want to parse. So for this image name, those ports will be exposed. And right now uh, I have my database here, 
course, so yeah. It's actually empty. Yeah, no, not test. This one, Postgre, it's empty because we didn't put anything there. Uh, but still, you can always connect by the same ports. I will show a bit later with the example of the real application. So let's stop it and terminate containers. So like this is good. Uh, we can start it, but what if we want to uh, combine the start of containers with our application lifecycle and to make it not manually, but in automated way. Uh, we can go here. This is how it can be done for spring uh, lower than version three. Let me actually do it a bit bigger. So here you need to put uh, test containers annotation, test containers and you specify container. Let's take the same Postgre. This is Postgre. You can, uh, if not specifying this annotation, uh, you can run it before each test, but you can say here Postgre start. In this way it will be run before each test. If you remove it and make it static, then this container will start uh, before the, the class of your tests. Uh, there are also like different approaches how to implement it. You can do single tone and run it once before your whole test suite. And this is how it can be done in Spring uh, 2.7. Uh, what is also important here is to uh, provide Spring the context that you want uh, application to use this particular Postgre uh, when application is started. Uh, you can do it with, uh, let's say, mm, dynamic property source. Static set me and you provide here dynamic property registry registry static void and you say here postgre start and you can say registry add and here spring uh, data source uh, URL if I remember correctly and here you say postgre get GBC URL. And data store, yes. Okay. Again, just let me see your own. Why it's not okay? No. Yes. No. Oh. Uh. Yeah. Uh. I need to do like this. Yes. Uh, and in this way you can add also like username, password, everything that you need your application to know in order to connect to this particular instance of Postgre. Uh, but we will not go further with it because there is Spring.1 and other Spring versions that support test containers out of the box. Let's remove it. 
But this is kind of old fashioned way. If you use Spring Boot lower than 3.1, you need to do these things. But if you use Spring 3.1 and later, I have 3.1 here, not the latest one. You can specify containers as bins. And with this annotation test configuration, you can say that this bin should use test containers and the service connection will also say Spring context that it should use this particular uh, containers uh, as bins in order to run your application. Uh, this is provided for Postgres, this is provided for Kafka container uh, for local stack, you can use it as a bin, uh, but you still need to add it uh, with the Spring Data Registry. Um, also, after you specify the bin, you can do something like depends on, and this code will be initialized after your bin of local stack is ready. Um, and I have Wiremock also here. A um, few words about the application before we move forward. So this is application that I will show right now. Uh, this is just simple thing. Uh, I have Kafka, I have Postgre, I have AWS bucket uh, where I put product images. Uh, application can give products, can add products, and can update product image uh, that will be stored in the bucket. So there are three endpoints uh, like uh, post product, get product, and update an image. If I want to run this application in the test mode for my local development needs, what I need to do is have this containers config class that we talked previously with containers predefined that is needed for my application. Oh, and Wiremock, yeah, it provides uh, just response for uh, third party service. Like, I don't own the service, I just need responses from it. Uh, so to run it, uh, I can say uh, this should be done in the test class pass. This is important. Um, I can say what application I want to run. Uh, I would say that I want to run it with containers config and like particularly that's it. So I can run it. Actually freeze is not needed. So it will also take some time to pull images. Uh, when it's done, we can access, access application. So Kafka container is up, pulling local stack. The first run usually takes uh, more time than the next one, also because of the containers pulled. I never saw people using test containers uh, in the main in production code, not in tests. What would be a use case to, to use it in, in the real time? Um, so particularly this local development. Um, so in this case, uh, you run your application from the test class pass mm -hmm. uh, for like local development needs. Uh, I don't think that test containers is like good solution for production. Like in production, you should use real instances, but for testing and developing uh, locally, uh, this is a good solution for emulating the services because there are the real services, but you don't need to configure them manually. Uh, 
uh, with Docker Compose, you usually need to manage the life cycle on the con of the containers. Uh, you need to set, say, the application when to run this Docker Compose, and then you need to somehow manage uh, the removal of containers after your test suite. Um, you can always have a clear state as well, and you can yeah, debug easily. Yes, yes, so uh, right now, so yeah, application is running and it uses this containers config class with mm, Postgre, Kafka and these services. So you can have them in Docker Compose, but uh, you usually need to manage the state and you, you need to write this Docker yeah, Compose. Uh, you need to write it but in I the... I also need to write this thing as well. But the thing is there, yes, for test this, definitely, we want to start from the like, design stage. But when it comes to like, local environments, usually I want to create like a user in the database, like a business user or some like, done products and keep them forever and not start from scratch every time I restart my app. So mm, you can do it. Uh, so this yeah, application can will you preserve state like with that container? Yes, you can have reusable container and uh, for example here I run Postgre with uh, where it is reuse false. If I say with reuse true uh, it will keep the state. So it will be particularly the same container, just uh, it will run when I say it and will be killed, but then it will take uh, the initial state that uh, it was before. Do people usually do that, save time, initialize the database, setting up all the business state, or do they just run it every time and see it every time? Um, for Testing usually you have like predefined test data config that you use, and for local development, like I, I would say, it depends on the case. Like here, uh, application will take uh, right have it resources DB migration. This is the predefined state of the database uh, that will be used for application. So you can see uh, application is running and if I go to Postgre, it is here. This is my test database and this is products. And these products are the same as in this state that I say in the version control. You can do whatever configuration is needed. Yeah, I mean, like, why it is not the best idea just to have one more stage in your CI CD just to initialize DB and then just apply local base changes, run tests, and just post containers? That's actually a good idea, and I don't see any downsides to that. Um, so this is actually what test containers is doing. Yeah, that's, yes. that's what I mean. Like yes, yes, yes. So uh, I just heard, like, minutes ago like this is not the best idea for production why what do you mean on real instances so why are more it's using here like Kafka, Kafka container that's a great idea to have those services work right and you just testing one service why should you actually test on real instances and real DB um, so you test with real instances but for production uh, like we do not recommend use test containers containers for production this is for tasting more. Okay. And I, I have a remark regarding the Docker Compose. I think that YAML is scary. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, like also in Docker Compose, you need to write it and it needs to be written in 
like correctly you need to know how to manage it with test containers it's programmatic way so you are in your ID you're in your class and you just add one knob method um, yes in maintaining and having all those docker images running locally creates the you know it works on my machine problem right so by having everything defined here in code and then loading every single time then you avoid that you know maybe there was an instance in your database and that's why the test passed yeah I will show it a bit later yeah so uh, we have service running and I can for example modify something here uh, description modified if I go to postman just for visibility I can uh, query my API uh, and I receive here data like particularly this one that was modified right now so if I need to do some manipulations with database uh, like I can just send queries and see that <coughs> results are there. I can create product. Uh, okay, let's send this one. Here is the product. So this is fully running application with Postgre local stack Kafka uh, that is set up on my machine uh, without installation of the services. Uh, so this is local development uh, use case. Uh, let me stop it. Okay. And I have number of tests. So this is a base integration test. This is test to get the product. And product control test also. Uh, some negative cases, update product. It's not so important. Uh, but I can also run them. We can see them starting here in a few seconds, I assume already, because we have images pulled. So all containers are running. Okay. <laughs> and they are done. Uh, for test, we use the same application that uses the same uh, Postgres, same local stack. And as you can see, containers were there. Now they are gone. Uh, also, um, I'm using right now Test Containers Cloud as a runtime. Uh, you probably may not even notice it, but I'm not using local Docker. I'm running it in the cloud. Uh, this is also one thing that provides consistency. So for example, you're using Windows, your colleague is using new MacBook and some images are not working for them. Uh, if you use cloud as a runtime, you will have consistency across all environments, like every developer and CI as well. Uh, if we run the same tests with freeze containers, they will be not uh, destroyed. And in the terminal, I can also say docker context use tcd. And now I can do docker ps. And this is, uh, can I do it bigger? Mm -mm, no. 
So this is containers that are running in the test containers cloud right now, but I switched the Docker context and now I can see these containers and their state. Because they are run with a freeze feature, they will remain there after the test is, uh, uh, after the test run. So tests are done. I can terminate them. Okay, so only Ryuk is there and uh, other containers uh, are destroyed. Ryuk is the container that test containers use under the hood to manage container lifecycle. Also, uh, we can go right now to the dashboard. Uh, we can access it also from here, the same dashboard. Uh, that shows sessions and images. Let me make it bigger. Uh, last images that are used. This is kind of team feature that you can track uh, whether you are all using the same version of needed container or not. And see sessions here, who run what containers where. If we talk about CI, let's add some test. Um, get product. Okay. Let me just copy, paste it. Okay, fails. We don't have this product there. It will be status for all four. Oops. Mm -hmm. I forgot semicolon. No. Ah, I don't need product here. Okay. Um, edit new tests. Red. Run them. Okay, I don't want freeze anymore. I want them to be destroyed. Run. So, it takes also some time, but it will be done soon, I think. We have containers there. Okay, this is correct test. Uh, they are all passed. Uh, what we can do now, we can commit these changes. I have this repo in GitHub. So what we can do. Uh, before that, we may also want to do Spotless check. I have spotless plugin just to. Uh, how, is uh, how expensive is the cloud version? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you mean for IDE or for <coughs> test that is cloud? Sorry, oh, I. Ah. I thought for ID, I don't no. know why. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was a strange answer. <laughs> I heard for this containers, I don't know how it could. Um, uh, so right now pricing is uh, $35 per seat for developer and two cents for worker minute. Uh, but this is negotiable. Uh, 
like we can talk about it uh, and as we are part of docker right now if your company has docker business subscription this is also something uh, like the pricing is something that we will discuss and review so it's $35 per developer right? is it per month or uh, this is for this is for cloud. Let, uh, let, let's be clear. This is for cloud environment. Uh, test containers desktop like this application. It is free. Oh, okay. Yeah, and you have 300 minutes of cloud environment included. But if it is something that uh, like you want to use with your team, uh, then this is 35 per seat and uh, for CI, two cents per minute. But like you, you can download it, you can use it for like single use, single developer use, this is free. Okay. Does it work with um, Podman or any other container services if a company doesn't use Docker? Yes, uh, it works with any Docker-based... Uh, uh, like yeah, like Docker-based environment. Uh, add the new test. Podman Rancher, mm, yes, it's supported. Okay, so I pushed this commit and we can go to actions and this is a build that will run tests. Uh, how to add test containers cloud also here as a runtime. Uh, I have my workflow here. <coughs> so this is standard Java setup. Uh, then you add for GitHub actions particularly. This is like in general approach how to run test containers based tests uh, in CI. Uh, with uh, GitHub actions, if you don't use self-hosted workers, uh, it will work out of the box because you have Docker there. If you use CI that doesn't have Docker or like that have Docker, but you will have this Docker and Docker situation when you use Docker to run your CI and then you use Docker to run test containers. So it's containers that, that's not, not very good. Um, this is how you can use test containers cloud as a runtime for GitHub actions, for uh, GitLab and other uh, mm, CI providers. It's pretty the same. Uh, you just generate this token and add the step. So that's all is cover it here uh, in the install section. This is test containers application that I showed before. Uh, web application. So this is GitHub, this is CircleCI. So you, you create service account, uh, add this key to your uh, CI provider and set up this step. So it's pretty easy. Also on dashboard, it shows right now what containers is running and this is GitHub action. This is what projects run them, workflow. Also pretty straightforward. Let's take a look. Okay, build is done. And this is, uh, okay, I can pull and merge. and merge yes so right now we just added one more integration test that uses real application uh, with different dependencies it is automatically run in ci and this is how the whole workflow can be covered yeah yes is there any integration with that terraform say with terraform for infrastructure more specifically how to handle multiple environments say local and staging environments mm. i probably don't have the answer right now but i can ask uh, the engineers how they uh, like our team uh, if we have something for this case uh, 
Let me actually double check. Uh, because in many cases, the uh, local environment is different than the staging environment. Um, so, like, actually, uh, you can remove staging environment if you have uh, kind of automated build with this approach. Uh, staging environment is something uh, Uh, like if uh, it, it also probably depends on the complexity of the application and the, like if, if it's financial service uh, I yeah I think it will be harder uh, but if you know like what versions of uh, your like databases and these services that you can set up in test containers are used in staging and in production I think they should be the same you can set up these versions for the local development as well like run images of these versions of your services. All right, so tests are done. Uh, yeah, that's probably pretty it that I wanted to show and maybe just few more words to wrap up. So we have test containers open source that's available on GitHub. Uh, there are a lot of instructions uh, on uh, testcontainers.com. You can go there and check what modules we have. This is something that you use, uh, you can use for real dependencies as a code, for integration testing, and for local development. Like mostly, the primary use case is integration testing. Uh, there is test containers desktop application that is companion application for better debugging story where you can run services with test containers and then connect to uh, static ports for debugging. And there is test containers cloud that provides like elastic uh, uh, infrastructure and brings consistency for um, different environments, different uh, setups, platforms, etc. Uh, right now there are three components, most likely one of them will be part of Docker desktop, maybe extension. Uh, we are working on the future state right now, so if you use Docker desktop, this is something to come. Uh, and I have some links here also, please join our Slack, I didn't put the QR codes, but a lot of things. Uh, Slack, testcontainers.com, we have a lot of good guides that covers different technologies, different modules, how to include them into your project, how to run tests with NCI, what best practices we have, and so on. Also for different languages, not only for Java. Um, and Java version, by the way, works with Kotlin. If somebody uses Kotlin, it will work. Um, this is GitHub repository that I showed. Uh, you can do it by your own, with your own speed to understand better the technology if you want. This is also public, uh, publicly available. There are all steps described there. Um, yeah, and uh, up testcontainers.cloud if you want to try test containers desktop. Uh, one more time, test containers desktop is free for solo developers. You can use it by your own if you want to use it with your team. Uh, then it's paid subscription. Is it included in the Docker Enterprise subscription now? Um, it is not included, but prices will be different. And if your organization has, int like, if you have Docker business subscription and you have interest and see the value in, like, test as desktop and cloud, uh, we can talk, Docker has a lot of contacts who manage subscriptions, so it should be like easy. If developers want something, they mm, usually procurement provides it. Gotcha. Yeah, so I think that's it for today and we are on time.
Yeah. yeah. About GUnit 4? Yes. No. No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, test containers, uh, if, if you include this library into your project, at some point of time, you may notice that you have GUnit 4 dependency in your resources because one of our libraries, I don't remember what exactly, it just brings it with it. Uh, we didn't fix it yet, but we will do someday. <laughs> okay. uh, like all also, I if it's a problem, there are some uh, workarounds, so you can. I mean, I just want to mm -hmm. keep my class pass clean and that somebody accidentally don't mm -hmm. doesn't use G unit four. And my second question is like, of course, just as much as you can tell us after you were acquired by Docker, like what changed? Like, do you think it's like for better or? I think it's for better um, because like we as a startup before Docker um, had limited um, resources uh, if uh, some enterprise wants to adopt the technology. Uh, they just don't work with startups. They work with big company. But okay, Docker is also a startup technically, uh, but uh, it positions itself almost like not startup already. Um, so uh, we struggled with uh, bringing technology to people because of procurement things that drive a lot of things in enterprise. So, um, And also Docker uh, was uh, to some extent uh, competitor probably uh, because in test containers desktop we enabled the feature of uh, uh, embedded runtime that doesn't require like any docker environment and in this case like uh, it was sometimes hard also to uh, compete it with docker uh, and docker with this acquisition I think they have this verb test uh, that was lacking from the initial setup and uh, it can also bring value for testing not only development with docker environment that like everybody probably knows but better testing experience and like I, I think it's important and <laughs> when developers have good tools to write tests uh, they do it if they don't have that's usually some team that's doing testing and like we, we don't want to do tests. Um, yeah, so I, I think it's a win-win for both companies. Gotcha. And a follow-up question then is like any plans on merging Docker desktop and test containers desktop using the Um There are discussions around it. Uh, I... Hmm? <laughs> no? Because, because now you your application is free and Docker desktop is not. <laughs> Docker desktop, but still you have to use it with Docker. <laughs> But why not? Docker desktop, you need some kind of rocket, uh, not uh, just local, uh, not just local, but top. It should be uh, with the high FDA characteristic, and that's why I can use it. <laughs> that's why we have Test containers Cloud. That's actually also... Um, yes? For, for, for a beefy machine, you also need to pay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, like there, there are different cases, but still. Um, so yeah, like th there will be some changes. I, I don't know about them. They are under discussion, so uh, I would probably uh, not share, not the final state. Uh, Mirantis? Yeah, probably. What, what does it mean? Like, are they just like, are they keeping the brand? 
Mm. I actually don't know much about that story, but Docker is still Docker. There are no changes in it. Yeah. I thought the talk was great. The um, getting rid of like dynamic property source and everything is awesome. I didn't even know about that. It's been writing on it for quite a while. Um, mm -hmm. So the talk is great. Um, one question I do have. Mm -hmm. When it comes to enterprise, enterprise like to keep things on prem. Test containers cloud definitely solves the dark rooms operation that we're always seeing. So if is there any like chance that we're going to be moving like a portable like test containers cloud into like on-prem uh, applications? Or is that already out today, or is that something we do in the future? What does that look like? Um, so like clear on-prem, we are not doing, uh, okay. but um, we uh, have the feature of bring your own cloud. Uh, Right now, enterprises usually already use AWS or Azure or Google Cloud, but just in more enterprise-ish way. So you can bring this cloud to test containers cloud. So like so there, there is integration. Cloud, like a VPC. Yes. And also we just before the KubeCon, uh, and we announced it on the KubeCon, we released test containers cloud as a zone in OpenShift. Uh, so it can be just added uh, pretty easily uh, if you use OpenShift. Thank you. Yeah, so I guess like the main question is like a speed of test containers. Like mm -hmm. Just recently, like this week, we, we, we wrote a um, unit test for a, a repository. Mm -hmm. And it looks pretty cool, but it takes like a minute or sometimes two to run. And then we thought, sort of, okay, like we essentially need to have this unit test for every repository, every repository class in our application, and we have like ten of them. And then we were thinking, well, it could be like slow like, for everybody. Uh, what would be a solution there? Mm. Maybe review the strategy of how you run your containers. Uh, whether it's run before each test, before test class, before test suite, and if you can optimize it. Uh, if you run container before each test, it will it will take a lot of time. Yeah. Uh, but if you see that it can be optimized and one container before test class will be sufficient, uh, you can run it in this way. This yeah. is just pro programmatically, so you can use singleton approach to run this container before. That's what it. does you do? Like Spring Data GPA test or Spring Boot test? Uh, so we use Juke. Juke is a library which like, works with strange databases. Yeah, it, it's perfect with GPA as well. Mm -hmm. And we run it on class. So essentially we, we have like one test container per, per class. And if we like combine it somehow, then we make everything more complex. Uh, but uh, if there is something like, I don't know, like mm. a hot start test container or something, because when images are already downloaded and container is there, maybe there is a way for container to just clean its state and become um. available. Um, you can try reuse feature. Sorry? Reuse feature. Reuse. Yeah. much more expensive operation than just <laughs> delete tables. Data, drop, drop data. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, like consider using translation because then we, you don't even have to drop the database. You just run the error and ready. We, we already have transactions. Mm -hmm. In test, you know? In, 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 in a, yeah, we test transactions. Mm -hmm. So we cannot have transactions on top of the transactions. But it's a good idea. Let's take a look. Yeah. 
Okay. Oh, okay. Two minutes. What about the execution itself? Not including the setup and everything else? Let's take a look. Like a really basic Build. test one. <laughs> yeah. And like also, I have only five tests. If you have, uh, and most of this time took containers pool and mm -hmm. set up. If you have more tests, then like pool will take yeah. one minute and the other test will be very fast. Okay. Cool. All right then, any other questions? Thank you. Thank you.